Hi, Dr. Don. Such an honor to meet you. Oh, my God. I'm getting a little uh, speechless now. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me and, uh, and accepting my invite. Well, for those uh, uh, few that might not know you, Dr. Michelle O'Don is, um, is a prominent, maybe one of the most prominent uh, obstetricians and childbirth experts um, since the 50s. So you have more than a half a century of experience. Wow. An author of many books. How many books have you written, Dr. Okay. About 15. Wow. <laughs> About 15, and I think so. Beautiful. And uh, translated to uh, many languages. And you have been... But what, when you introduce me, what I think you should emphasize regarding, when we consider the topic of our conversation, it is in 1977, I wrote the first papers suggesting that among humans, uh, lactation is supposed to start during the hour following birth. Nobody knew that before that. There have been thousands of years of beliefs and rituals, the effect of which was to postpone the initiation of breastfeeding. So in 1977, I I wrote, I said in conferences as well, that homo humans, uh, let's say another way, that human beings have been programmed so that in our species, lactation is supposed to start to be our following birth. So I think it's something to mention. No, absolutely. Now, we talk you talk about breastfeeding. Yes. And we talk about, I think we have to say a lot to say about the connection between birth physiology and the physiology of lactation. Yes, thank you. Thank you for reminding me that. And you have been presented in Lancet as one of the last real general surgeons. Um, oh my God, what an honor for me to be sitting here and chatting with you. Uh, I'm thrilled. Um, one of my favorite quotes from you uh, is that childbirth, childbirth needs to be mammalianized. And I love that. Because my, my video is called We're Mammals, so it's all about that. Can you, can you touch on that? And how about breastfeeding? How should that be mammalianized? Yes, or mammalianized. Mammal, like mammals. Yes, because it's the, almost the opposite of humanized. You know, when you humanize, we, we introduce the effect of what is our cultural influences and so on and so on. So, we, to a certain extent, we have to eliminate what is cultural, which is specifically human, in some physiological situation, such as the perinatal period. You said the, the, the time of human life when lactation starts. You know? So at that time, you know, we might almost say we have to dehumanize, <laughs> to forget <laughs> to that what is specifically human to put our uh, uh, human brain, our neocortex, our thinking brain at rest, you know, to forget the rest of the world. So, uh, interesting, yeah, you introduced this concept because, uh, in fact, we have to mammalianize this period. <laughs> that is to say, to reduce neocortical activity, to say, to reduce the activity of the part of the brain that is highly developed among humans only. Mm. So developed that, for example, now you are in Vancouver, I'm in London, you can communicate. Only human beings can, can create such situation because we have a powerful neocortex as a tool in some situations. But in other situations, for example, the period of birth, this active tool, this the neocortex, in reality, can inhibit physiological functions, can obscure physical function. So uh, in some situations, this tool, uh, this wonderful tool, this powerful tool, our neocortex, our new brain, must be at rest, must stop working. Right. And this is what we have to understand in the period surrounding birth. Our rational brain, our neocortex, the part of the brain that is highly developed among humans only, 
the stop working in this critical period, this period when which includes the birth itself, the initiation of lactation, it's a continuum. A continuum, I might even say that starts even before the labor starts, that already there are some physiological changes. You know, we know now from MRI, for example, that some part of the brain of the gray matter are shrinking as a way to prepare for the birth. So, and after that, we might say that the birth process is a way to prepare lactation. Uh, lactation is central among mammals. That what definition of mammals that we are fed originally with the, with the milk of our mother. That's what because mammals. So it's central. But important to realize that the birth process, the period of birth, is the phase, the main phase of preparation to lactation. Wow. It's preparing to lactation, to what is make us many mammals. Uh, and easy to explain that now. For example, I'll give an example of why it's so easy to explain. We understand today that during the birth process, mothers, human mothers and other mammals, protect themselves against some kind of pain by releasing so the so-called endorphins, beta endorphins. So an endorphin, beta endorphin, is a release of prolactin. So just saying that, and you see a chain of event, pain in labor, physiological pain, endorphins, endorphins, prolactin, prolactin, motherhood hormone, prolactin is ready to release milk, important in lactation. It's a chain of event. We might say something like that in the system of oxytocin and so on and so on. So today, we are in a position to present the birth process as a phase of preparation to lactation. Wow, wow beautiful, beautiful. It means, and it's very important to say that from a political perspective, because what we disturb dramatically, and we have been disturbing dramatically for many years now, is the birth process. We have socialized childbirth. We have made it more and more and more difficult. Now, most women don't give birth by themselves today. At the global level, uh, most women use, uh, replace their natural hormones by drips of synthetic oxytocin. Synthetic oxytocin is, oxytocin is cheap. Hmm? The cesarean section are safer and safer. So uh, we can say today at a global level, human species, that uh, most women today don't give birth by themselves. Mm -hmm. And when we understand that giving birth is a phase to prepare lactation, is it to guess why lactation is so difficult in our society? Why there are difficulties? Of course, it has not been physiologically prepared. But in the very beginning, you know, the first three minutes following birth are essential. It's about three minutes after birth that the mother can release the highest possible peak of oxytocin a human being, human being can release, but on the condition that she's not distracted, she has nothing else to do but to feel the contact with the skin of the baby, to look at the baby's eyes, to smell the odor of the baby without any distraction. But it's so difficult at a time when birth is so much socialized, socialized. Mm. So is it to explain why lactation is difficult among humans? Uh, that's why uh, when we are talking together about lactation difficulties, <laughs> you are aware of that, uh, I found interesting that you are originally a midwife. <laughs> so you can probably understand more easily than many other people the strong connections between birth physiology and the physiology of lactation. We might say to a certain extent the priority today when you look at all these 
périnatal period, the priority is to improve our understanding of the basic needs of laboring women, to understand birth physiology. And we have the possibility to understand in a new way birth physiology. Uh, if we start from a new question, one reason why we don't understand birth physiology is that we start from a wrong question. And we don't start from the right question. Look, remember your textbooks, <laughs> your textbook about birth physiology. What, how, what is the point of departure? Point of departure is why human birth is difficult. That's a question. And they say for mechanical reasons, that's all. So we don't need to know more. We don't need to know more since you cannot change the shape of the body of the mother when she's my mom. That's all, that's all. Then what I want to say that it's different if we start from another question. The other question, the useful one, is not why human birth is difficult, is why occasionally some women give birth very easily, very quickly. That's uh, another way. If you start from that, okay. we understand what we can learn from neurophysiology, reducing neocortical control, and so on. So that's what I want to say because it's, it's central. The, the essential fact is that we have to start from the right question, not to wonder why is human birth difficult, but why it's occasionally easy. Yeah. And I remember you mentioned somewhere that instead of going into studying the uh, anatomy of the uterus for birth, it's more of the brain physiology, thinking of how birth is going. Uh, about, again, touching on the neocortical activity. Yes, I said that in a different way, saying birth physiology is first a chapter of brain physiology. Yes. People look at what's happening in the pelvis, you know, in the, in the uterus and so on, when a woman is in labor, they should look at what's happening in the brain. That, uh, so beautiful. That, human being so special, so special among mammals, is this highly developed neocortex. And uh, giving birth is not the business of a highly developed neocortex. <laughs> Correct. The business of uh, primitive, uh, archaic brain structures. Beautiful. Well, thank you. Um, I have a favorite part in my in one of your books, Birth and Breastfeeding. And uh, you mentioned that the same way the phrase putting the baby to the breast, often used to describe the first sucking, expresses a failure to recognize our instinctive potential in such circumstances. Speaking from my own experiences of home births, I can tell you that the baby invariably suckles during the first hour after birth, but nobody puts the baby to the breast. Mother and baby coordinate their actions. The important thing is not to get in their way. That is my favorite part of this book, not to get into their way. Now, well, what do you think about how intervention, uh, interfering uh, uh, with the process of the first latch, how that affects baby's uh, breastfeeding experience. Oh, yes, for so many ways. We inter interfere because the event is socialized. When a woman, mammals giving birth, they need, what they need first is privacy. When a woman has just given birth, in order to release a high peak of oxytocin, you know, oxytocin can be called the the shy hormone, the, the timid hormone. You don't release oxytocin if you feel observed. So what's important at that time is to desocialize the event, you know. That, and that was not understood. So we, what we need to understand is quite simple, but it's not easy to accept in which direction we much go today because we have to reverse thousand of years of cultural conditioning. It's about 10,000 years ago that we, our ancestors started to dominate nature. Dominate nature, that it started in fact in Italy, 
in the early 20s, what was Persia and so on and so on, dominating nature was not just uh, domesticating plants, agriculture, domesticating animals, animal husbandry, but it's also domesticating human beings, organizing their life in a new way, particularly the birth process. Before that time, women used to isolate themselves to give birth. You can imagine that baby was born, the woman didn't, was, could not feel observed. It was simple, she was on the planet. It was probably simple, but gradually, we became more and more and more and more socialized. And today, childbirth is more socialized than ever. It's even masculinized. <laughs> there are men around that were new and so on. So it's not surprising that women cannot give birth anymore. They can have difficulty to breastfeed because the phase of preparation to breastfeeding is disturbed. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to add uh, to this uh, conversation? Just as a message for the new moms that are maybe concerned and anxious about breastfeeding? Like if I have to give a new, a short message to women who might become mothers, <laughs> uh, it can be very simple. To give birth, you need to release hormones, but one is particularly important. This hormone is the shy hormone, is the timid hormone. It's called oxytocin. Oxytocin, it, which is so important during birth and, and breastfeeding, particularly immediately after birth, is the shy hormone. It does not appear if the mother feels observed. It does not appear among strangers. So just remember that. To give birth, and at the time when you start breastfeeding, you need to release the shy hormone. That takes Beautiful. a minute to important. Well, thank you so much. This means a lot to me, joining me. I'm in Vancouver, you're in London. Beautiful. I mean, thank you. Thank you.